What's up guys? We are back for a NECA Toys review, taking a look at the latest in Predator figures, and that would be this monstrous figure here. We have got the Assassin Predator from the The Predator movie from 2018, the big hulking like 11 foot tall Predator in that movie, finally here from NECA in a pretty snazzy box too. So let's take a look at packaging real quick. We have got a shot of the assassin taking on the fugitive on the front of the package and then the back of the box has got a bunch of product shots for the figure and his accessories showing him his scale off against the fugitive and then of course being a ultimate style box you got a flap here pop it open and we've got the predator there in all of his glory in the window and then we got a big product shot of him there on the inner panel so let's do it let's pull this guy out and take a look all right, guys, here he is out of the package, the NECA Toys Armored Assassin Deluxe Action Figure. And yeah, this guy is absolutely massive. It's really hard to describe how big this thing is without actually having it in hand. And of course, we'll do some size comparisons, but this thing is uh, pretty cool to see in person. It is definitely different from a lot of other Predators, not just because this guy looks so, so unique, pretty much all the Predators in this movie looked unique, but he is just a different beast altogether from size to construction to aesthetics. So let's just jump right into it, see what this thing can do, because we've definitely got to talk about articulation, because that is where this guy takes a key turn from, I'd say, what every other Predator ever made. So as usual, we'll start at the head, and this guy has a ball that goes up to a peg, so he can go up all the way. He goes down about as far as possible with the big uh, jawline he has. And then you've got a little tilt action, and of course you've got full rotation. The arms go out. You do need to watch these shoulder pads. These are kind of like his shoulder armor, because that's one of the things of this Predator, is he can kind of armor himself up. They are rubbery, but they will snag on the spikes that are on his uh, on his kind of traps here. So just watch out, and then once you do that, you can rotate freely. You, of course, can rotate all the way around. He does not have a bicep swivel at the top of the bicep. This guy is really similar to the Fugitive Predator. He has this uh, double-jointed elbow here that swivels, so it rotates at the top of the elbow, the bottom of the bicep, and then it hinges all the way around in two different places. So you get pretty good movement and it makes for a clean elbow. I'm not sure why they decided to do this. It's not the norm for Predators. It doesn't, doesn't bother me, but it leads to some questions because I thought we got this specifically with the Fugitive so they could swap his arms out easily. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna happen here. You've got rotation at the gauntlet at the wrist, and then you've got hinge and rotation at the wrist. And uh, you've got a diaphragm swivel, so side to side. He doesn't really have too much back and forth. A little bit, you can get him to go about that far. It's just, you know, it's going to hit eventually. But he does move pretty well. And then he goes backwards about that far. And then he goes forwards. And then, of course, you have got your waist twist down there at the midsection. For the legs, we've got a twist in here at the joint. You can kick forward and backward. And then he goes outward, and it's ratcheted as well, which does help with balance and stability. And trust me, you're going to need it uh, just because of the type of feet this guy has. So you've got twist and then you've got kick forward, back and outwards pretty decently. You've got a rotating uh, upper knee here or lower thigh, upper knee. And then you've got a hinge and you've got a double hinge here. This guy on, on both legs, it is so, so tight. If I've got one problem point when it comes to articulation, it's this knee. Uh, there's a good chance that I won't even be able to move it right now. It's really, really tough. Um, trust me, it does move, you know, maybe some application of heat for your particular figure. I've done that a few times and it's still giving me trouble. So word of caution, don't chance it, heat it up and make sure you can work that joint out. It definitely does move, but mine is uh, really, really seized and it's just bad right now. You can see that it has a uh, it's, there we go, we got it. And uh, once you've got it, it will move pretty well. He's got a pretty far kick in terms of how that leg moves. So that's my one problem joint, and it's like that on both legs, unfortunately. We've got rotation down here at the, whatever you wanna call this part of the joint, the upper ankle, and then hinge outward, so forward. You've got a hinge forward and backward on the feet, and then you've got a rocker down here. So this guy is a digitigrade 
type of creature. So he stands on his toes. And like I mentioned, that's really, really beneficial when it comes to the, the leg system because he has those ratchets. He's not imbalanced or hard to pose, but he will take a little bit maybe of a learning curve just to get him right. You have to take into account he's top heavy and he just is a different figure. Something like this is not meant to stand like that. That's not really normal in nature for the most part. So balance is key. But once you find that sweet spot, I mean, I threw him right down on the table and he stands just fine. You just got to work at it uh, and it, it does stand pretty well. You can definitely get him into some really cool poses even with these kind of feet. Now, when it comes to the look and feel of this figure, size is obviously at the forefront of my mind. Just, I mean, just look at this thing. He is like 11 inches tall. It's a massive figure. It's the biggest predator, right? There's no other predator that this big uh, as far as uh, NECA's offering or even in canon, right? I think this is the biggest one. And uh, yeah, he's just a massive figure. So we've got a lot of paint going on here. There is some very unique sculpting. Obviously this guy is, I mean, he's he's unique. He's a new, unique character, but we've got this like armored carapace on him. And that's one of the things, you know, he's, he's a genetically enhanced, you know, spoiler alert, I suppose. I figure people who want to see this movie have already seen it. And most of those people, myself included, really didn't care for it. So we've got this uh, kind of genetically altered predator that can armor himself up, which is why, if you are wondering why he's basically naked, it's also one of the reasons why he doesn't wear a mask. This is, this is a predator with Without a helmet, without a mask. So we've got all these spikes and he's almost got kind of like a concrete look to him. You can see all these kind of like muscle striations all over the body though. He's of course adorned with all of the uh, like the red patterns that run throughout the body. That's the majority of the coloration on this guy. The rest of him is kind of that deep concrete-y kind of color and it very well flows throughout the figure pretty nicely. You've got, uh, you know, his spine that comes down. He's an oddly built predator. All things considered, he's he's built in a way that you would think he would be hard to make as a toy. You know, he's got this kind of spike that juts out the back, which kind of gets in the way of him moving. But of course, NECA, NECA figured a way out of, the, out of that. And then we've got the, uh, you know, the digitigrade feet. So he's, he's an odd character, odd build to make into a toy. And I think they did a pretty good job when it comes to designing this body. I really, really like the way he looks. You've got his uh, loincloth and you've got this little side piece over here. There is some silver metallic paint. You've got some blacks. It's done up in that kind of style that mim mimics and looks like leather. It's also rubbery as well, so it flows. This piece in particular moves with the leg so you don't have any problems uh, with articulation. And then you've got his two uh, gauntlets, which are all done up very similar to the Fugitive Predators. They're, they're similar in style. They're not 100% the same. And then uh, you've got a bunch of adornments here as far as silver and black wash, reds, some of this kind of teal color that almost looks like the same color as his skin, but it's a little different. And then you've got this guy over here. They're basically the same, but with a little bit of a little bit of a different uh, hits here and there. You've obviously got a spot for a blade. You've got a spot for a plasma caster over here. And then, you know, there is a lot of this kind of spiky nature all over the body. You've got the, the shoulder pads and everything that runs down. It really lives up to the armored name for this guy because he is, uh, he is built to withstand some punishment. Not enough in terms of what happens in the movie, but he's built to last, I, I suppose is one way to say it. Then you've got like these spikes that are all over the hands. There's a bit of a wash in there as far as like uh, kind of a brown muddy color almost. So it looks like he's been kind of in the muck. And then you've got the spikes down here on the feet. And when it comes to the overall design of the legs, I'm pretty happy with how they how they managed to uh, to do this. It actually works pretty well. Again, like I said, balance is key when it comes to posing this guy, but this it works surprisingly well. It's a unique look. It's different for a predator. You know, we don't have any that look like this. I don't think there are any others that look like this. This was kind of a specific thing for this movie. And I'm sure this presented its own host of design challenges as far as a toy goes. Although NECA, you know, has to deal with that sometimes when it comes to alien stuff as well. Um, but it's a cool design. It's unique. It's different. And it works. And it presents some, some posing opportunities and some posing challenges. But you can still have a lot of fun with it. And it definitely looks unique and cool and it stands out and it's one of those key differences when it comes to this figure this predator versus others and in that regard you know he is unique pretty much from head to toe and i think everything here is really nicely done he moves well he looks nice 
paints are cleanly applied where they need to be. You know, these look kind of rustic and uh, used and nasty, so that works really well. But the rest of the figure is really solid. The patterning on the red works nicely, and there's just a lot of detail that's crammed into the skin tones and kind of the rocky nature of this body. Of course, we have to talk about this head sculpt because it is a thing all its own as well. This guy is really, really similar to most Predators, but he's also a little different just in some key ways. He's got like those two big teeth that stick out on the inside of the mouth. He's, of course, got a much larger set of mandibles. He's got the red crest that runs up the spikes all over his head, and then he's got little spikes that kind of jut out of his dreadlocks as well. The dreadlocks are kind of interesting. I think they're still a little malformed from being in the package on mine because they really don't sit all too well until he's kind of looking neutral. When I'm posing him, you know, I want him to kind of drape down, and I think they just need a little time to uh, kind of sit a little better because they were kind of crammed in that package. But the figure in general, from a look standpoint, I mean, he looks menacing. I don't have any issues with wonky eyes or anything weird. There's a lot of paint up here, that kind of concrete. It's almost got a green hint to it in some ways. And then you've got the bone color on those mandibles around the mouth, some dirt, some grime. It's almost got brown eyebrows up there. And then you've got that copper color that runs down for the adornments on those dreadlocks. So, I mean, you, you can't deny it. it's a really cool head sculpt. And I think they executed on it really nicely. It's another instance where I just think it looks good. It's functional. It's great design, and then I don't have any QC issues to speak of on top of it, so that's always a plus. Now, as far as size comparisons go, we of course have to take a look at the Fugitive Predator next to him. So you can see that this guy comes up to just about the bicep on this figure. And I mean, just the general hulks, hulking size, the, the heft of this figure, they are in two different leagues, and it's pretty obvious that they are in the movie as well. So you can see that there's a definite size difference. Huge advantage to the Assassin Predator here, uh, but they are a night and day difference when it comes to scale and just size in general. And here he is next to the recent Marvel Legends Caliban bath and Hasbro's Lord Zed from the Power Rangers Lightning Collection, he looks diminutive. And maybe my favorite comparison thus far, this is the assassin next to the Mondo 1-6 scale He-Man. So as you can see, this guy can, can almost in some ways fit in with your 1-6 scale figures. You know, I'm really interested to maybe try to put these guys toe to toe. They definitely, uh, they definitely sort of go together. You know, he looks a little scrawny in comparison, but the height is there. So it gives you a really good idea of just how big this figure is. And it's a huge, huge change from NECA's normal offerings when it comes to Predator. Now, as far as accessories goes, this guy has a decent amount. He doesn't really have a lot of stuff to, to bring to the table. I think NECA gave us just about everything that I can think of. I've only seen this movie one time, and then I went back and watched the fights a couple times. So correct me if I'm wrong, someone, if he should be having more things. Yeah, but I think they gave him the majority of what we should expect here. So you've got a plasma caster that can fit into the little notch on the top of the left hand. And it's keyed. I'm honestly not sure if I'm putting in there correctly because I don't really think it moves all that well. Uh, it does hinge. It goes back and forth. But then it doesn't, like, store correctly. But I think that's because they gave us this little guy here, and this seems to be like the cap for it. So you take this out and you put this guy in, and it'll be like when it's stored. Again, I just don't remember, so that's probably what this is. I certainly can't find any place else for it. So you've got that to contend with there. And then we've got, I guess, like the maybe the cooler of the weapons. You've got his big blade. So very much like the uh, like the Fugitive Predator has. And this guy just sits in here, and this goes in so much easier than the blades on the Fugitive Predator. I had the hardest time with those things. And this thing just pops right in. It kind of notches in. There's a little slot that holds it in place. And it, and it stays just fine. And then on top of that, you've got an extra pair of hands. So you've got some fists that you can swap in and out to uh, just, you know, change up your display a little bit. But of course, we do have, I guess, the most important accessory when it comes to this figure, an extra head. And since this Predator doesn't have a helmet or a mask, we get an open mouth screaming face, which I am perfectly fine with. This is the face that I'm sure I will use 
whenever I decide to throw him on a shelf somewhere. So it's basically the same head sculpt as the other face in terms of, you know, the intent and what it's doing, but the uh, the expression is obviously different. So you've got the open mandibles, you've got the mouth that's fully exposed, so you can see those, those two inner fangs along with the bottom row of teeth. You can see the nasty predator mouth inner workings, which is always unsettling. And there's a lot of paint in there. There's a lot of muck and grime and nastiness. So you've got like a different shade of white with some pink and red thrown in there. And then there's a little hints of kind of dirt and nastiness as well. So beyond the, beyond the fact that it's that same normal sculpt, you've got all this extra detail, extra stuff, because uh, NECA kind of went the extra mile on this face, I think. This is my preferred head sculpt. They're both great. But I mean, come on, you can't go wrong with an open mouth predator. So at the end of the day, this figure is absolutely what I wanted it to be. It is a hulking, massive predator that, while it may come from a movie that, frankly, I don't really like, I love this predator design. I really think it's cool, it's different, it's unique, and it's just a fun figure. And, you know, on top of the fact that I like the design, I think NECA did a really good job in translating it to figure form. The look is there, the size is there, the articulation, while different and in some ways kind of weird for a predator with those different feet. It works, he's balanced nicely, and you can put him into some really fun poses. I just have a lot of fun messing around with this figure so far. It's It's been one that I have not been able to put down since I got it home. So that's a good indicator for me that I've got a cool toy here. I have not been able to stop playing around with this thing. So that's going to do it for this look at the NECA Toys The Predator Armored Assassin Predator. That's a mouthful. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.